welcome to Sail Away. We are Eric, Lauren, Rivers, and Zeke, and after traveling for three years aboard our monohull, we've decided it's time to make the leap to a catamaran. Join us for tours and reviews as we search for the perfect one. Welcome back. We've got yet another boat that we are touring today, and this one is another one in our second boat category, which is more fixer-upper category. And if you haven't watched any of these tours, we did a whole bunch in a little bit higher price range tour of about 400000 This particular category is under 250000 four cabins. At least 44 feet. And that's mainly it. We're looking for a boat that's a good value that works well to live on as a family and uh, just needs some loving. As always, we're going to be judging these boats on a system of thumbs. Very, very precise measuring device. One. Are you going to do it with me? Oh, sorry. Two. Three. Four. Five. Man, we're getting like so good at that now. <laughs> so, we have five categories that we will be judging on. The first one is build quality. The second is sailability. The third is trampolines, which is only Rivers category. Fourth is livability. And then the last one is value. The value is the only category that's different from our other group of boats that we've been reviewing, which was the X factors. And that was just sort of the undefinable qualities that make you love a boat. We're sort of pulling that into value on these boats, but because these are more fixer uppers, the price and what you get is really the most important thing. I think that's it. Yep. Let's uh, get started with our review of the 92 Privilege 482. It's a big old boat. Yeah, definitely needs some love there, doesn't it? Yeah, first off, you can definitely see some fiberglass work that needs done. I really more like gel coat work. That's to be expected. It's a 30-year-old boat, you know. This is a single helm out on the stern. And this is an old school ebony style top on it. So I've seen a lot of these where they have added a fixed top or a complete hard top. I feel like that's something that we'll probably want to do. Well, this it's nice and big. Got these lounge areas on the side. Need to Resew some things for sure. Otherwise, you start to get past that stern area and the deck looks really good. These privileges are kind of known for their uh, those big slanty windows, which can be a little bit of a greenhouse. So that might require some, uh, some shade flies or something to help cool it down. It's got nice new covers on it though. Those look brand new. This uh, life raft is fairly new. I'm not crazy about its location where it is, but and it looks like this thing has new trampolines, they said, and it looks like one has been installed and one is not. This is the old one. That one doesn't look like it's completed yet. Wait, I, I think I know where the other trampoline is. Did you find it down there? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, you're going to have to, on this boat, you're going to have to give it a um, hypothetical trampoline score because we would have to restring these trampolines and get them nice and bouncy, but they're new, so you have to think about that. I'm go walk on it and just see, the, get the size down. It's really kind of cool the way these nacelles are, kind of sit. I know. Lots of room to sort of like sit around the sides of it. It does feel nice. This one just needs restrung. So 
make it nice and bouncy. But it's brand new, it's really nice. It's so nice and Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Kind of a downside, depending on how you want to look at it, of these privileges is all the spars are painted. But that means that after they get a little older, they start to chip away. And so when they're really fresh and shiny, they look awesome. But right now, we would we would have to sand all that down and I think we could we could probably paint a good bit of that without having to like, put it in the yard or anything. Wouldn't have to step the mast. Most of the uh, really crumbly part is down low. Oh man, it's a vast amount of deck space. That's for sure. So here's the cockpit. I think this has been added on. I think I would remove that and do it. Just a standard binnacle would be better there. So on these, the jib cars and track are right down here in the cockpit, which really gives you a good sheeting angle for that big giant jib that these things have but you know you've got the workings back here in the cockpit it also means all the winches to sail the boat are all back here with a big long traveler across the back these privileges especially the older ones are supposed to sail really really well you know it's just evidence of the sort of trade-offs that have taken place I guess where you know back when they were making this boat it was more about making it sail really well and then secondarily making a, a comfortable boat to live on. And they've slowly kind of taken away the pure sailing elements of a lot of catamarans in favor of just pure comfort, which I understand. I mean, especially at anchor. But the upside is if you're looking at one of these older boats, you're going to get something that, that has a lot more room to sail well. And that is a long traveler for a really huge mainsail. And that's that's a big deal when it's when you're trying to point. To be able to actually trim your sail to the shape you want it to be. One thing that does not appear to need any work are these tables. They're beautiful. Revarnished pretty recently. And that's what needs to happen to these doors and the frame and everything. Once it was done, it would look pretty, pretty sweet. Yoga. This is one of Lauren's big parameters. No, all I want it is to be able to do like a downward dog and not have anything <laughs> to the side of me. And you can even do downward dog here without giving the boat behind us a show. I know. I suck down. So yeah, this will be really nice. My yoga studio. Yeah, there's a lot more space in this cockpit than I than in the pictures and just by the way the boat's designed that I really expected it to have. Yeah. And even with just the bimini shade, it's a lot of a lot of shade and a lot of cover. And a lot of these will do like a shade fly up here off of the boom that goes out over both sides. And a lot of them add a, a whole hard top or a fixed, more of a fixed bimini that goes out more over the sides there. So one or both of those kind of things would be in order, I think, eventually on a boat like this. So, back here at the wheel, we got both engine controls. This has one engine completely rebuilt on the starboard side. On the port side, uh, it's still the original engine, but is reportedly running well. Visibility on a boat like this when docking would be something to get used to. There'd be a lot of just stepping up on these steps and driving with one hand to kind of see where you are. Yeah, I, I, I've got this building basically. <laughs> I'm one side of this building. Yeah, I can't see that. Especially with this bimini the way it is, you can't see through right here. So that's another reason why a better system on the bimini would be really advantageous because it would come straight across like right about here and you could see through it to the far corner there. Sonari has a pretty nice set of solar panels. They look a little louder, but reportedly they do a pretty good job still. Really nice stingy davit system. Those are rugged. And again, it's one thing about the privileges is they're, they're known just to be extremely high quality, very, very durable, very rugged, just built 
extremely solid and just walking around on the boat you can kind of tell that it just feels it feels sturdy yeah could it be restored to its former glory maybe i haven't even looked inside yet i mean price is right so <laughs> yeah i know that's the thing that's what we're talking about in this category you think the outside is too daunting yeah. i don't know a lot of sweat equity details that like just making it look prettier and straightening up certain things about it. I don't know. I, th I think if you could snap your fingers and like do some of those things, it would be worth more right now. Yeah. But you can't. <laughs> you definitely can't. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. No. Oh, it's got bean bags though. Sold. We put a hundred thousand dollars of renovation in it. It's not necessarily going to be worth a hundred thousand dollars right. more. It'll it's it's be, listed for two fifty nine right now. Be, yeah, three fifty nine. If it, which, if I don't know. it might be, we have I, to look at the comps. I, there's another one out. There's another one for sale that's beautiful. That's in Italy, but it's listed like three fifty. So like, there's there's the possibility. Yeah, least. you got to do everything the right way though. Yeah. I mean, hmm. All right, inside time. All right, this is the interior. It's very pretty in here. Like it, like it needs again. It just needs some love. Like some of these ceiling panels are not affixed quite right. Want to do another ceiling project? <laughs> it can't be that. Well, it's actually it's way simpler than ours. There, I just fixed that one. Perfect. One of the cool things about this boat is these are galley down, and it's something that we always told ourselves we didn't really like. I mean, it makes for a really big galley. There's tons and tons of room down there, but you get. Two big tables up here. We could also fit a lot of people. To, to party? We could definitely fit a lot of people. Yeah. You want to open that door? I saw you discovered the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the fifth room. Be careful. Go in there. Oh, okay. That's where the second one is. Cool. So this is kind of like a bonus room. And looking at this online, to us, this was a potential river's playroom, and possibly also laundry, because in many of these, this space right here is a sink, but that is a perfect size for a little washer, a washing machine. So we could put a washing machine right there, and this could be the laundry room and your extra playroom, because this is a massive bunk. Yeah. Which, again, it would need a good bit of cleaning up. Big closet here. Gosh, closet just full of stuff, but it's huge. And obviously, this is a hobbit hole. It's very short. It's not meant for tall people to stand in. It's, I know, that's why it's perfect for you. It's like a, a kid's only playroom. Yep. There's a ton of headroom walking in. I don't have to even duck to walk in. Right. I have to do it this way, I guess, because you gotta step down. All right. But all the way to here, and this is going to be a head cracker, I'm sure, but once you're at this point, you're sitting down. You're going to the, the couches. Yeah. But all through here, this is like light up. These windows are pretty cracked and messed up, so at some point those would have to be replaced. <laughs> it's a big list of stuff. <laughs> if we waited around, you'd probably find other boats on the market for cheaper than this that are kind of in this size range that maybe like an old lagoon or... An old FP or who knows what it's a privilege I mean I hate to keep like making it out to be this amazing thing but they were and still are like a luxury brand boat that was built like very overbuilt for ocean passages and ocean cruising I mean it's still that boat it's still sturdy and still it just the the cosmetics are just rough really all it is everything we've seen in the listing as far as the mechanical stuff goes is awesome this boat's got copper coat it's only been put on a few years ago. We wouldn't have to deal with bottom jobs for another seven years, probably. It's got two new max prop feathering props. That starboard engine has been completely rebuilt with a new transmission. It's got a brand new generator uh, that's now got about 700 hours on it, I think. It's got like a lot of good mechanicals, but it just needs like the electronics upgrades and like a ton of cosmetic work. Can we it's take out that speaker right behind your head? Yes, or we can just make it look better one or the other. Let's see what they sound like first. 
Make sure this is the port hole. <laughs> oh, we gotta fix that. <laughs> For some reason, this came comes off right there. I think. It's the other way. Turn around. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Wood glue. Okay. It's missing a piece on this side. Mm. You know. Break it. You bought it. See, now this is the kind of stuff I look around the boat and I see places where this should be done and not like with this. It needs, it needs like an actual piece of sand and trim that's been stained and varnished. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. And like all these ceiling panels could fairly easily be recovered. Not easily. I shouldn't say easily about Nothing's anything. Nothing's easily. You know, when, uh, so there's like water. You know, it's a stain, but it's not. It's from, it's from, it's from the previous day of that. So anyway, yeah, galley. Don't forget this bathroom. Big top loading fridge. It's pretty rough looking. Yeah, front Ooh. fridge. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I thought there were two. And that one has Actually, nothing in it. Nicer, I don't think it's working. Do we know what's wrong with it? Like the whole compressor evaporator system system shot, so it just needs to be replaced. Just that one got replaced also. Okay. That was already new and replaced. This one just needs the same thing. Again, it's really good quality stuff, but it <laughs> needs refinished. What's this? Just a pantry? Yeah. Hmm, that's nice. And it's insulated too. It's probably for food. It's probably for food right. in there so it doesn't get hot. Right. There's two cabins in the front, and they're the bigger cabins. So, how many bathrooms? Four bathrooms? Four bathrooms. The, the two front bathrooms have. Separate shower all the way forward, and the back ones I think are a wet head in those two. Which good size shower though. Just, ooh. Nice big Run. nav station. This would Run. be Warren's <laughs> editing station, maybe. As long as we can get you some shade outside so you don't cook under those windows. For real though, it's it's got really nice airflow through. It's oh. not that bad. All Look right. how wiggly it is. Starboard hall. So this is pretty much like the master suite. And the woodwork down here is really nice, actually. So this would be the master cabin. Looks like a pretty nice big bed. A lot of these plastic hatches would need to be replaced. They're pretty rough looking. Or painted, maybe. All right, here's the question. They're good closets. Can you, can you fit in the bed? I don't know. Let's find out. So you're going that way? It's just the way it's laid out. Oh. I mean, you fit. Look at that. There's like an inch. <laughs> I got. You got. That much from the head. Well, that's good. It's actually Yeah. It's weird from that perspective. It does not look big enough. Cool. Yay. Thumbs up. Primarily hanging closets, but you know how we feel about those. And stuff lots of clothes in hanging closets. <laughs> yeah, that's just it's just tons and tons of storage. There's tools everywhere. In there. Where are the light switches? Oh, they're real high up. I'll have to do something on them. So you, you like this bedroom? Why don't you get in the bed and see how comfy it is? Then? Very big. You got a hatch right above you, and a hatch right next to you. And there's definitely enough room. You like this one? Yeah. This one, look out. Maybe enough room for a sleepover. Maybe enough room for a sleepover. It's pretty cool. How's this one for you? Good. Yeah. Main bathroom. I can really stand up. Just stand and do my hair. Yeah, it's really good. Really good light in here. Well, it's too good. <laughs> Turn it off. No, this is a uh, this this one. This is the, the captain's quarters. So it's got like more stuff. Nice big shower. It's plenty tall for me. Uh, this this one's got all new faucets and rail and and then you know, we've got tons of storage in here. Kind of like mess and cabin storage. And storage down below. There you have it. That was the privilege 482 1992. Yeah, a really like unique boat. Part of what caught our eye when we uh, first saw this one available. The first category is build quality, and 
for me, that was kind of a big factor in wanting to look at some privileges. They're well known for their build quality. They're well known to be really solid, rugged boats made to be able to handle ocean passages easily. Older boats back in those days, that was kind of a new thing, especially for catamarans. They built things heavier. This boat felt exactly what we thought it would feel like. It's really, really solid. All the rigging was very hardcore, big, chunky shrouds and turnbuckles, and everything underfoot just felt really solid. Down below, privileges are known for their beautiful wood interiors, and again, that are built very solidly. It's an old boat, so a lot of that woodwork does need work. The foundation is there of you know, just like solid build quality. Yes. It was built nicely, but it is 30 years old, so right. it does need, it needs help. It's a balance between how it was built and getting it back to that same quality. If we can get it back to that same quality. Right, or we're close to it. So yeah, with an older boat like this, I guess that's the thing you have to figure out is if it was originally built really, really well, was it maintained well enough to, <laughs> yeah, to be able to get back to that? Yeah. There were some issues with how they built these boats. The skylights became kind of their signature look, but they're problematic. And this is across all these older privileges. And there were signs of it inside. You can see that these skylights have been a problem for years and been leaking. There's cracks in them. They have to be replaced at some point. Obviously would be a kind of crappy job, but not necessarily hard. So for build quality, although I wavered a little bit, nah, I went with a five. I, I think the solidity of the boat overall for me was enough to, to get it all the way up there, even though those windows he dealt with pretty badly. It's 30 years old, so the build quality is just, yeah, it's 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Category two. Sailability. Well, this one's kind of complicated. Yeah. Because this is unlike any boat that we've looked at. Right. And we've looked at so many newer boats in the other category, and then we looked at the Dean, all of which are set up in a more modern way. Right. This was set up in a sailboat racing. 1992. Way. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't have all of the bells and whistles. Hadn't explored different ways to do things helm at position. that point. I hate the helm position, really, but I couldn't tell you a, a different way to do it on this particular boat because of the way that it's built. Another part of sailability, it's not just how well does the boat sail, it's how how easy is it to sail? How well are the lines run? How well can you operate getting the sail up and down? What's your visibility when you're maneuvering the boat? And those are all admittedly not great. It's, um, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's definitely set up in a more simple way, which could be good or bad. I would like it if there was an electric wench or two, but... It's a big boat. It's obviously not in mass furling at all, so you have to take the main up and down. Well, that's, um, that's all. No, I know, but without the electric wench, like, right. it's it makes it a big, yeah. a big job to big do course. every time. But it should sail well because it's set up in a yeah. more sailing specific instead of a living specific right. way. There's something to be said for the way it is laid out. The winches are just right out in the open. You can like stand and grind a winch, you know. Right. You, you go to the cabin top to to raise the main. So there's there's it's not running through a whole series of blocks to get to it. It's simple. You walk up there, somebody tails the right. tails the halyard and you just hoist the main up. Right. Not everybody's cup of tea. Might be set up perfectly for us because yeah. we do like right. those things. But, but yeah, visibility when it comes to like docking and stuff would be terrible on this boat. I mean, really tough, even yeah. for me. 
I don't know how you would ever drive this boat into a dock. I don't think I could. You would. You would drive it into the dock. I would, yeah, I would go directly <laughs> into the dock. <laughs> this one was back and forth and back and forth, and so our final scores in this one were, yeah, three and four, and I was, man, I was teetering back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those I think you'd have to live with it for a while to really yeah. appreciate the pros and cons more. I, I think ultimately I kind of dig the the simplicity of how the running rigging is set up. It's more old school sailboat. It's not ultimately as convenient as newer boats. Right. Now, it's the best category, best category of, them of all. all. Trampolines! Yeah, we're this lucky on this boat. boat that we happen to have one of the foremost trampoline experts in the world today, Rivers Danger Dove. Mm -hmm. He is bounced on a 55 Outremer and a Lagoon 40, and every catamaran in between. You're even him, just on a Hobie Cat. Giving him unique insight into what makes the trampoline tick. What did you think about the trampoline on the privilege? I kind of like the wind coming through the land. Um, it had particularly. Pinning in your feet because it feels really good. Particularly good wind really flow. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. You didn't get a bounce on this one because the tramps weren't really all the way secured. But like size wise, they look like they're pretty decent size. They're bigger than I thought they would be. So you feel like it was big enough to accommodate you and several friends to jump on. Alright, well so so what do you what do you give this one overall trampoline wise? What is that a six? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, just a five. <laughs> Which is a ten. ten. So it's a ten, yeah. Rivers gets double score in the trampoline category. Nice, good score. Thanks for your expert opinion. Well, uh, your check will be in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> We're up to number four, which is livability. How well do we think we could live on this boat? Really well. Pretty well. Yeah. Um, it's 48 feet. It is the biggest boat that we It's very wide. Seen, right? Yeah. Because it's so wide. It's 26 and a half feet wide. Right. So, and it's over 48 feet long. It's 48 feet and a few inches, I forget. Right. What and it's that? five cabins. It's got just kind of the extra space that we didn't think would be available to us in, in our price range at all. We didn't really talk about there are two huge sail lockers on that boat. Yeah, one's got the generator in it, the other one just a pure sail locker, fenders, whatever. The thing about that fifth room, it is very, it's very unique. Yeah. There's no other boats that have a layout similar to that one with that fifth cabin kind of tucked up in the front. Very unique in the way it's laid out and for us it is kind of a hobbit hole but it's got a ton of good storage in there and a king-size bed for sure. It's huge. A place where Rivers could go and his friends could go to play and they could kind of they could kind of tear it apart <laughs> and leave stuff out, leave Hot Wheels tracks out, leave Legos out, and they're not just in the middle of the boat. I was not real enthused about the the galley down, but I think it works. Yeah, I was I was surprised at how well I liked the galley down too. It was way more space than I pictured. I mean, it was a big boat, and there's a big. It is a big boat. Yeah. There's a lot of room on the sides that wouldn't be used otherwise. Right. So I think it was a really good use of that space. And the fact that the galley is down means there's a whole lot more room up in the salon. Yeah, the, the one thing that I do not like on that boat and that wouldn't be fixable is the beds though. There's no yeah. like... Straight up Pullman berth. There's, you know, one person will have to climb over the other one to get in and out of bed. That would take some getting used to. Yeah. Otherwise, those were very very nice cabin and then I really like the bathroom there was tons of room in that bathroom huge shower I hate wet heads but I don't mind it when you've got a couple of really good standing showers and then you save space in the aft bedrooms by just having a wet head in there and still those aft bedrooms those are, those are huge beds with pretty decent storage again a use of space that we 
really haven't seen in other more modern boats. On the outside of the boat, the the davit system was really, really nice. It looked like it needed restrung. The block and tackle was kind of whacked out, but I don't think there was anything wrong with it necessarily. But the, the davit arms were really, really cool. Pretty cool solar setup that would tilt tons of space outside. Lots of places to lounge around. Awesome foredeck. So the outside I thought was far more livable than I expected. The canopy over the cockpit would be a big, a big one. That, that is a yeah. outside definitely the biggest negative. And I can see that being a little bit problematic on rainy days and things like that when you want to be able to just walk outside without worrying about it. All right, so livability for both of us. Oh, look at that. Ugh. Shit. <laughs> Should be better at this by now. I don't know how many of these we're going to have to do before it becomes automatic for me. A four to four, we agree. So eight to Yeah, four. our final category for the privilege, 92, 482, is value. Value. It was listed at 260. Yeah. Thousand, two hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, back when this boat was originally sold, it was an expensive boat. Granted, back then these big cruising cats were a pretty new thing. I think just because of the the build quality and the name does kind of bring that value up, even though the price is in a little little bit higher category. In the space, we in a space. I yeah, mean, it's a forty-eight and a half foot boat. It's like, really. It's it's spacious. a big, it was a big, big boat. Yeah, like so. dollar per square foot right. of usable space is pretty darn good. Yeah, but there was a lot that needed to be done. It was cosmetic, but still if there's... Mostly. If you have yeah. to pretty much touch every part of the boat to redo it, that's going to add up. Even if it's just your own time and, and heartache and sweat. Right, like the Bimini sail bag isn't a sail bag. The lazy bag was kind of destroyed. So it that, looked like it needed redone completely. That needed fixed. Basically any wood. Well, there was a lot of fiberglass work that would need to yeah. be done. It was very dinged up and marked up just needed a really good buffing but I mean it, it might need painted in areas right. if not like the whole like hull and top sides just eventually yeah it, but it, it also had some good things yeah personally I think it was a little high the value isn't isn't as good at as 260 at 260 yeah. but I think it could be doable Right. At, a, at just a little bit lower. Yeah, 230, 220, something like right. that. Right. Just to give room to sort of bring a lot of that back. Inside, a lot of cloth panels that could pretty simply uh, be pulled down and recovered with something fresh and interesting. A lot could be done to, to make it really shine, but it would take a lot of work. Yeah. But I think when it was done, you could have a $350,000 boat. Who knows how much it would cost to get to that. Right. <laughs> we have to put in 200000 to get it to that yeah. 350000 <sighs> For us, you know, we know thinking in this category that there will be work to do. So the question is, is that work something that you can do? Is it work that you can do pretty cheaply? Is it work that you can do yourself? And will the results make the boat look nice and desirable and do well enough to make up for the work and time and money that we put into it? Yeah. And again, it is a big boat with big space. Um, big potential. Big potential. So, for value, we went another duplicate. Look at us. It's an eight. So we that's an eight. So that's an eight. Good job. For the Privilege 482 1992 overall score. 42. 42. That's a solid score actually. All right. Well thank you for watching yet another Sail Away boat tour. There will be more to come.
go check out our videos. There should be a playlist right there of all the boat tours we've done so far. Comment, subscribe. So, yeah, subscribe and like. <laughs> and go like check out our Patreon page if you'd like to support the making of all of our videos further. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye bye. Wait for a coffee refill. Bye. bye. These are the bathrooms. That's one bathroom. That's the other bathroom. No, this is the bed. Maybe my mom and dad will stay in here. I don't know. That was a long landing, but it's fine. This might be my bed. This is her bedroom. I don't know who this is going to be. My grandpa's. And this is the last bedroom. Whatever. I don't know what is in here. Maybe it's a secret room? Closet? I don't know. Look, the coffee is made. The coffee is made. It's cool. Two ways to make coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And for some reason, for some reason, this came from Zod right there. That thing. The other way.